Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody? How's everybody? Fine. How are you? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good. I see uh, Sister Tracy Boney on. You okay? Sister Bonnie? Yes. Yes. I was having trouble getting connected to the audio. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 I'm yeah, well. How are you? you? I'm good. Got good. you early so uh, we can make sure you can answer all the questions that's on the test tonight. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mrs. Freeman. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. You didn't have to shoot any kids today, did you? <laughs> oh, no. Today was a uh, award ceremony, so no. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I had problems doing my award ceremony. You know, I was at Westline, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sister Rosemary, everything going good? Going good. Okay. All right. I see Sister Bishop on. Are you there? Yeah, we both here. Okay, bro. What's up, man? What's happening? All right, I got my uh, I got my wood ready and the uh, fire. So can I bring it on tonight? You about ten steps ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I still need to hold up. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Uh, I see Sister Prince on. You on tonight? Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. All right. All right. All right. Good evening, everybody. We want to go on and get started. I'm going to, I don't know if you want to, if you have those forms, that those sheets that I gave you on Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, take it out. If not, don't worry about it because uh, Tracy Boney is going to pass the exam at the end for everybody. So we don't have to worry about that. But um, if you had it, that sheet that I gave you Sunday, those of you who were uh, there uh, for Sunday school, um, take those out and turn it on the side of the diagram where it said Old Testament's books chronological order. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Rosemary. Uh, can you pull your camera down just a little bit? There you go. Want to see your face. All right. Can you give us an opening prayer tonight, please? Unmute yourself. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping us this day. We come to you this evening, and we are grateful for the opportunity to study your word virtually. We humbly ask you for your guidance and wisdom as we discuss our study tonight. Grant us the clarity, O oh Lord, and the understanding, and may we hide your words in our heart so that we will not sin against you. Bless all of those who are on this Zoom call this evening. Bless our teacher. Bless our family. And thank you for your presence and your divine grace. Uh, this we ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, uh was talking to somebody today. Can't remember who it was. Uh, but they were just talking about how bad things are and how tough the times are. But, you know, <laughs> I s sat down at home as I was preparing for tonight. And if you start counting your blessings, you know, it's not so bad. I, <laughs> I remember, I don't know about y'all, but, you know, I that was a time I didn't have a car and I was riding with my friend and we only had two dollars between us we got two dollars worth of gas which was you know gas was a quarter 25 cent a gallon back then but when we were when we would go down those long hills and hope he would turn the motor off right. mm -hmm. <laughs> and let it coast as far as it could and then crank it back up and go on up the hill 
and we go where we need to go. Uh, remember uh, putting money together to five, buy a fish plate from the blue moon because that. I was too young to go in there because they were selling alcohol. So we sent somebody in with our dollar and 50 cent to get us a fish plate so we could share it together on the outside. Uh, but we did a lot of walking back then. A lot of people were yeah, walking. Yeah. But you know, most people now, it seem to have cars. I see a few people walking. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, buses are up and running. We had a trolley. But just saying, if you count your blessings, you know, it's, just, it's not as bad as we sometimes put it up to be. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we thank God tonight for all his blessings. Looking at your Old Testament books chronologically, uh, that that is the order of them. OK, you see Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua and Judges. Then you see first and second Samuel, and above that, you see a little uh, box up there that has North on it, and it has Amos and Hosea. That means that they were prophesying to the Northern Kingdom of Israel. I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, then the next one, you see first Kings, then you see the South, and you see uh, Joel, uh, Micah, Isaiah, Zephaniah. That's the southern kingdom of Judah. And then you see Jonah in the next box under second kings and Nahum and Obadiah. Those books, they prophesied to foreign, in a foreign country. Okay. Uh, they were neither in the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom. Okay. Then you see in captivity and you see the return and all of that will be explained as we go through these different books. But I wanted you to kind of see the order that they came in, the order that they were actually uh, written in, because it's not it's not the way it is in the Bible. It's not written chronologically. They are not placed in the Bible. You have the major prophets first. And then you have the books of the minor prophets. In other words, major prophets are those guys that wrote a lot. <laughs> uh, the uh, minor prophets were those who did not write quite as much as the others. Okay, now turn it over on the back so we can get into where we are today. Are uh, getting into where Hosea was. I, you know, it helps me to link things to things in life. So. You know, I kind of can see uh, that these people were actually human and actually did things. Okay. Y'all remember uh, kind of after the children of Israel got into um, the promised land, uh, they divided up into family groups, but they wanted a king and they got Saul as their king. Uh, then next, uh, one they don't talk about much, Saul's son served as king for a little while. Uh, couldn't find the exact dates um, because cause Saul's son was a Baal worshiper, and so they didn't talk about him very much. Uh, but then we know David came next, and then Solomon. And Solomon was where the problem came, uh, Sister Rosemary. Okay. It was Solomon... Solomon loved foreign women, and as he got older, mm -hmm. God had warned him in his early age that he was going to be weak in his old age, and God tried to strengthen him, but it didn't work. So uh, Brother Bishop, uh, Solomon loved foreign women. And you know they were not supposed. He was not supposed to marry uh, anybody that wasn't one of the children of Israel. Okay, but he did as he got older. But he was trying to bring in land and property and all that. I, you know, he had I don't know what six hundred concubines. I don't know about three hundred wives, something like that. I don't know the exact numbers. But what he allowed was he allowed for idol worship because some of these women were idol worshipers and they brought their religion into the kingdom and so God got angry with him and God told him 
that I'm going to take 10 of the 12 tribes away from you, and I'm going to leave you two because of your daddy. Because I loved your daddy, I'm going to leave you two. Those two were Judah and Benjamin. Benjamin. Uh -huh. Judah is where Jerusalem is. Okay, and I think Bethlehem was in there by Benjamin up in there somewhere. Though. So those places uh, God was going to leave in the lineage of Solomon. He said, then God said, I'm not going to do it to you, but I'm going to do it to your son. And his son was Rehoboam. Okay, uh, I, I can see Sister Bishop's antennas going up. Anybody got any questions so far? I hope I'm making sense. Okay, Sister Boney, don't forget, keep in notes because you're going to do the exam at the end for all of us. I sure will. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Solomon's son, Rehoboam, okay, becomes king. Uh, and then he makes a mistake. I don't want to get into all of it because it'll take too long. But Jeroboam the first becomes king. They divide into um, two separate groups. Ten of the twelve tribes becomes the northern kingdom of Israel. And two of the tribes become the southern kingdom of Judah. Judah being the uh, larger of the two, so they named it Judah. Okay, the northern kingdom. Ephraim was the largest, but eventually they just changed the name to Israel. Okay, so the northern kingdom of Israel, southern kingdom of Judah. Okay, southern kingdom, we'll talk about that as another time, if y'all don't mind. But the northern kingdom is where we need to concentrate on with Hosea. Now, if you're looking at your sheet that I gave you on the back, you see the different kings of the northern kingdom of Israel. But what you need to look at is are the prophets as well. But every king in the north was bad. They were evil. Not one, not one was good. It started out with Jeroboam. Jeroboam didn't want the people to go back to Jerusalem because he thought they may go back to Jerusalem and stay and don't come back to the north because Jerusalem was in the south. So he decided to create the same religion that the people did when Moses went up on the mountain. You remember when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments and was gone for a long time? What happened? What happened? People started worshiping all gods. They had a calf or something made. Yeah, they had a calf made. Uh, they made Aaron make it. They gave up right. their jewelry and had Aaron to make it down and melt it down and make. And he started. They started calf worship. Right. Well, Jeroboam decided to do the same thing in the northern kingdom. Okay. So now they are shifting away from the worship of Yahweh, the worship of God. Uh, he was the king, so those Levites, those priests, they didn't have any choice. Okay. So now, if we fast forward about 200 years, because in between that 200 years, you had these other prophets like uh, Jehu, uh, Abijah, you had Elijah, Elisha, you had all of those people. All those stories that happen around those people happen in the northern kingdom. Then you get Amos, and then God's patience <laughs> is about worn out when Hosea comes on the scene. So this book that we're studying of Hosea is the northern kingdom's last chance to get it, to get it right. And Sister Julia Prince, they didn't get it right, okay? I, you know, I, we're going to read through all of this book. But after this book, they, they don't get it right. And God's patience is completely worn out with the northern kingdom of Israel, okay? So any questions about that so far? I 
I thought sure Miss Bishop was gonna come on and ask me something. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check Brother Bishop is probably keeping her muted tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. I hear your voice. Okay, we good, we good. All right, so now this is the reason why God told Hosea to go find a woman that's basically a prostitute right. and marry because her lifestyle was basically what Israel was doing because over 200 years, they've gone completely away from worshiping God. They are idol worshipers now. Y'all remember about Ahab and Jezebel, right? Mm -hmm. All of that happened in the Northern Kingdom. So they've gone completely away from worshiping God and God keeps sending somebody to them, but they don't change. So that's where we are when we get to Hosea, all right? Last week in chapter three, okay? Remember, um, uh, what was her name? Gomer? Right. The wife, okay. Gomer. Yeah, Gomer had been with Hosea, right? He could, because he had pulled her in, married her, she had had children, but she left him and went back to what she was doing. She went back out prostituting. And I'm going to say prostituting, even though with, there's something in here that may make you think that um, he had to go buy her out of slavery or something. I think that was in verse number two, chapter three, verse number two. Can you read that, Sister Rosemary? Verse what? Where? I'm sorry. Uh, chapter three of Hosea, verse number two. Ooh. Verse number two. Ooh. Hosea three, verse two. I'm, I'm reading from the NIV. Okay. So I brought her for 15 shekels of silver and bought a homer and a she like of barley. Right, I, right. Oh, that's good, right? Her, that's good enough. Oh, okay. Okay. So that make you, you think that he had to go buy her back as if maybe he was buying her out of slavery or, or something like that. But no, he was paying a prostitute. Okay. Now, Benny, was, uh -huh. she, was she a prostitute when they got married or she became a prostitute after they married? Because I've read different commentaries mm -hmm. and they aren't sure. You right. Know. They aren't sure. And I'm not either. But I believe because it would fit what model God was trying to present mm -hmm. as she was before okay. they married but she went back to it right okay after being married so to me god was saying you you've been doing this all these years now you know i'm giving you the opportunity to come out of it i'm sending my word to you through hosea okay so listen to him and do what he says but they they might have listened to some of it but they went back okay to doing it so i i personally believe that she was before okay but you know there's no no way to know because we don't you know we don't know anything much about her other than what hosea says okay all right so he goes back pays her the price to get up out of prostitution right brings her back home okay uh and um it's not gonna work either but <laughs> we kind of get away from that but anyway that's what we talked about mostly last week okay um there was one thing they said i think it's in verse number four for the children of israel shall abide many days without a king or a prince without a sacrifice or a sacred pillar without an ephod or a teraphim. What's an ephod? Uh, uh, 
I got house a house full. Ma'am. Like a like a um house full. That's what it says in uh NIV. <laughs> okay, read read yours then. I mine's a little um, different. Let's see. For well, the Israelites will live many days without a king or prince. Mm -hmm. Without sacrifice, sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod, without ephod or household goods. I mean, household gods. Okay, okay, all right. We still don't know what the ephod is. Yeah, though. yeah. <laughs> Patricia Dotson just came on. I know she has the answer because she's been looking at this all day, right? Does anybody know what an ephod is? It has something to do with the priest. I mean, it's a part of their garment. garment. Yes, it's, it's the outer garment that they wore. You know, they wore this robe, but it had a, a breastplate on it that had stones in it. Each stone was for each tribe. Each tribe had a separate stone that represented their tribe. So that was the ephod, okay? <laughs> and then mine says, uh, terra, teraphim, teraphim are those people that, you know, they have, they put, I don't, okay, let, let me go back to my childhood just a little bit. I had an aunt <laughs> whose son had been in the military. He had traveled around the world. And I guess he liked those Buddha statues. Mm -hmm. So he bought her some and, you know, she had them around the house just sitting around. But that's what terror films are. They are um, statues that um, are basically for idol worship. So God, God is saying that you're not going to have a prince or a king or, or a priest or even an idol God is going to come a time when you're not going to have any of that. Okay. That's what he's warning them of, of what's to come. Okay. Does everybody get that message? Do you right. understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Then in number five, it says, afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord that is not going to happen before Jesus come or, or after Jesus come. That is not going to happen until the second coming. That's in Revelation. Okay. Remember now, we're talking only about what? The northern kingdom. Northern of kingdom, right. Thank this you. is, you got a whole other another kingdom in the south that's going on because Jesus has to come through the southern kingdom. Jesus is not coming through the lineage in the northern kingdom. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay the northern kingdom, those people are going to become what we know as the Samaritans. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now let's get to where we are today, chapter four. Okay. I'm going to start off with Sister Boney because I see her listening so intently. I want you to read verses 1, 2, and 3 when Hosea chapter 4. Okay. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing, and committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Therefore the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells there will waste away with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. Even the fish of the sea will be taken away. All right, all right. A whole lot in there. All right, now, God is bringing a charge against Israel because, as my grandmama would say, he done got tired. <laughs> he has his patience is worn out and he's warning Israel 
always understand now you know i used to get it confused because when they said he's warning israel i thought he was talking about just all of the 12 tribes but he's not he's only talking to the northern kingdom of israel here he's gonna talk to judah because they're gonna end up doing the same thing and get in trouble but right for right now he's talking to the northern kingdom okay, okay. all right now he said it's bad when god brings a charge against his people that's rough. But see, he's gone for 200 years of putting up with them, disobeying the first commandment, okay, which is, thou shalt have no other God before you. That's, that's first. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So he's saying, I'm bringing a charge against you, but look at what he says under that. There is no truth or mercy. Okay. Or knowledge of God. What does that mean? They didn't know the uh, the law or anything about God. Hmm. I like they that. Forgotten and didn't you know study it anymore? Had put it aside. If they had any knowledge, they had just <laughs> abandoned it. Right. Right. Anybody else? Um, in the NIV, it says that um, there's no faithfulness, no love, no enlightenment of God. Right. So, um, I mean, I think they, that just means that, you know, when it came to living holy, um, they, they was all just cast aside. Right. They didn't, they didn't live any of that. Yeah, they didn't know who it was. Right, right. <laughs> okay, anybody else? I see Patricia Dotson raising her hand, and I can't see her face, so that means... <laughs> Patricia Dotson? Unmute yourself. She must be busy. Okay. <laughs> All right, I miss with Erica Nick, so Erica get ready. All right, so, um, all right, so there is no knowledge of God in the land anymore. Now remember, now two hundred years of idol worship that's been pushed by their kings. Okay, which means that the priests had to do what the kings say. As a matter of fact, Sister Rosemary, in between in that two hundred years. Many of the Levites, because you know that was the priestly tribe, right. mm -hmm. many of those left the north and went to the south because they saw what was going on. Okay. And then it was no knowledge. It says no knowledge. Mm -hmm. And many of those people died, and then they had a new, mm -hmm. I mean, new babies, new Israelites. And so they wow. didn't have any knowledge. No. They didn't have any knowledge. And right. we're going to get to why more so in a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. Um, now, if you don't have any knowledge of God, then your moral compass is off. Right. Okay. Your, what is right and wrong in your mind. Um, Reverend Cameron used to say, righteousness starts with right thinking. See, if you never think right, if it's not right in your mind to do right, then you won't because you think whatever you're doing is right. You think wrong is right. You can do wrong so long you think it's right. Right. But you think you've gotten away with it. So you think it's okay. Right? Look at what it says next. Uh, in verse number two, by swearing and lying, and here, does anybody else have anything other than swearing? Cursing. Yeah. In the NIV. Yeah. Cussing and lying. See a lot of folks doing that today, don't you? All right. Mm -hmm. All right. By swearing and lying, notice it said killing and stealing and committing adultery. Because it's, it, it's been accepted in all these years. Look at what Jezebel did to Ahab. Ahab was so confused. He didn't know which way was up or down after a while.
because he was trying to get along with his wife. So much he was trying to get along with his wife. He was more afraid of his wife than he was of God. And so he allowed all kind of crazy stuff to go on. I mean, you know, they were sacrificing children and all kind of stuff in the Northern Kingdom. Okay. All right. And if if your if your compass is off, your moral compass is off. It says they break all restraints. What what does that mean? We still in verse number two. Break all the rules of it. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean rules, but then when reading that, it's like they are there aren't any rules, <laughs> right? But actually, to follow, so right, or they make up their own, right. Right, because there's no knowledge, there's no moral compass, so there's no knowledge of God, there's no, no knowledge of good and evil, so you just make up your own. All right, notice that the next part of this got me because I see it a lot today, and I still believe, okay, and what I believe, he said, uh, break, they will break all restraints with bloodshed after bloodshed. And look at what we're having happen in our right. community mm -hmm. today. Right. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, I just noticed that, you know, a lot of our young adults weren't coming to church. And they used to drop their kids off, you know, but that has started to dry up. And so people are not getting the word. Well, that's what church is all about. We come to church to get the word, to study the word, to get the word of God. We can have Sunday school so we can study the word. We can talk about it. We can discuss it. We can apply it to our lives. We hear a word from the pastor that God has sent for us through him for us to hear. And then we get here on Wednesday night and we discuss it with each other. This That is the church. That's the purpose. Okay. But when you don't have that, when you've gotten too busy or haven't made it a priority, because I don't think you're ever too busy. I think you do whatever you want to do. I know I do. Right. A couple of years ago, I couldn't afford to go to California. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have it. But I found a way because I wanted to go to the family reunion. And I went. And I had a good time. And I'm still paying today for it. <laughs> Sister Rose Perry. <laughs> I couldn't get that donut that I wanted today because right. I, I had to hold on to them two dollars. <laughs> I was at that song, my last two dollars. I had to hold on to them. <laughs> I get my old folks check. But when we get away from the church and more and more people are fall, there's a falling away. That they aren't getting the message. We aren't learning the word of God. And then there's that group of people who think they know. They think it's you know it's just boring to sit here and on Zoom on Wednesday night for an hour and just sit here and listen to folks talk. I got other stuff to do, I you know. It's boring. Okay. I don't know how to put put a stamp on that one. But what I'm seeing, what we're seeing in the streets, it's almost every day now. Somebody's getting killed. Mm -hmm. Somebody's getting shot. Bloodshed after bloodshed. I think uh, just yesterday, some woman was beat to death on the porch mm -hmm. you know, in Birmingham. This is terrible. Okay. Look at verse number three again. God said, therefore, the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells there will waste away what you think that means they will wait he said every one not the lamb but every one will waste away well, well the nrv said because of this the land dries up uh-huh uh, i would think that he would hold back the rain there would be no vegetation okay read the next part after that and all who live in it waste away 
Okay, yeah, they waste were, away. What about what does that mean? We I agree with you about the land. God won't send the water, he won't make it produce. But what about the people wasting away? What is that? I think dying. Okay. Not being able to feed themselves, so they just kind of waste away. Okay. Just have no strength, you know. And you know people can be dead and walking around, right? Right. Right. Because they don't have a word in them. So they just existing. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, with the beast of the field and the birds of the air, even the fish in the sea will be taken away. All right. Uh, let's, where's Erica? Erica, can you unmute? Yeah, I'm here. That didn't sound good. You said, yeah, I knew you was going to call me this script. I knew it would come. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> okay. Read uh, four and five for me. Okay. Um, but let no one bring a charge that no one accuse enough. For your people are like those who bring charges against a priest. You stumble day and night, and the prophet stumbles with you. So I will destroy your mother. My people okay. are destroyed. Hold, hold right there. Hold up right there. Uh, hold what you oh, got. Okay, 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 okay. It's <laughs> over. All right. He said, let no man contend or reprove one another. What is that? What is contend? Put up with. What's that? I'm sorry, Mr. Roman. Put up with. To contend. Uh, no. No. The opposite. Okay. The opposite. Not put up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Argue with. Oh, okay. Argue with. Uh huh. To, you know, you're trying to explain to somebody how they ought to be getting better and doing right. And then they arguing with you because they're saying, no, you know, okay. uh, I don't need to go to church because. Da, da 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 da. I love the Lord, and you know, uh, I you know I don't need to. Or they saying I don't need to put up with y'all folks over there because y'all ain't right neither. Da 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 da. But to contend is to argue with. All right, and reprove. Okay, that's trying to, you know, tell somebody what's right and what's wrong when you don't know yourself. Okay, in this particular case, when you're trying to reprove, contend is to argue with, reprove is trying to tell them what's right and wrong. Okay. okay. For your people are like those who contend with the priest. God is saying, look, y'all, <laughs> don't y'all be arguing. Don't try to tell nobody what's right and wrong. You know, because y'all like those folk that be arguing with the preacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what he's saying right there. Okay. All right. Now he said, and I will destroy your mother. Hmm. That's a hard saying. Okay. Um, read verse number six, uh, Erica. Okay. Number six, um, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you are rejected knowledge. I also reject you as my priest because you have ignored the law of your God. I also will ignore your children. All right. I already said it was going to destroy the mother. All right. Mm. Lot in there. Here's where we get this. My people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Okay. And that's what God is saying here. Now, what knowledge is he talking about? The word. Right, the word. Mm -hmm. He's saying, y'all don't even know. Okay. I think he would say 200 years ago, y'all had the word, now you don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, I'm the God that brought you out of Egypt. I gave you the law. He would have gone on on another long tangent. But he said, because he tired now. I don't, I don't know. That's my grandmama used to be. You know, she would sometimes she would give me these long speeches, but when she gave me the short ones, I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> like, I'm in right there, there. You know, all right. Okay, he said, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And why? Because you have rejected the knowledge. 
Okay, who is bringing the knowledge to them? Is it the Levites? No. Why not the Levites? Because the Levites work under the king. Okay. At this particular time, the Levites are working under the king. God didn't send any of them. God sent Hosea. He has sent prophets and and he has sent prophets and priests. Hosea is one. And they weren't listening to Hosea. Okay. Okay. All right. So because you reject the knowledge, I will reject you from being now. Look, now he gets on to the priest or the Levites. I right, want to look at that. Okay. He's saying that the priests are just as bad as the people. He said the priests are not doing what they are supposed to do. So because you have, look at what he said, I also reject you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. Because the priests were not teaching the people the law. They have so, completely gone away from that. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, I have a question. So, okay, so the priests mm -hmm. are, are are Levites? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. So, Technically, they are supposed to be. And so because they're you under... Remember, you remember so, uh, in the 12 tribes, there was one tribe under Levi. All of those were the priestly folks. Those were the ones who took care of the temple uh they you know they carried it around because it was a tent you know they had to carry it around set it up they did the sacrifices they would have sort of a a head person who would be the priest who would go in the holy of holies for them to do all of that okay okay so um, they they were under the king you said yes everybody's okay. under the king but especially them because okay. Uh, what happened way back, Jeroboam, uh, he didn't, he kind of made people priests and Levites. He just randomly did. Y'all remember uh, in um, uh, old English history with the kings in England and all of that? Mm -hmm. The king would go to the priest and if he wanted to marry somebody, you know, that we weren't supposed to be married, then the priest would fix it up so he could go marry that person. Mm -hmm. Or if he wanted to kill somebody, like his wife, who was a Henry VIII, he wanted to kill those other women, you know, the priest fixed it up for him. Okay. So that didn't start then. This was happening way back before that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here in the Northern Kingdom of Israel, because they are worshiping idols, they are teaching idol worship, okay? And not the worship of Yahweh, not the worship of God. Okay, so God is saying, my people are gonna be destroyed now because I'm, I'm gonna destroy them. But it's gonna be because of a lack of knowledge, not because I don't love them. Mm -hmm. My grandmama said, I'm gonna whoop you. It ain't because I don't love you, it's because you did wrong, okay? Everybody getting this? Any questions? Now, God is also saying, you priests, <laughs> I'm going to destroy y'all too. Don't think because you a priest that you think you're going to get away. He said, no, I'm destroying you and the people. The sad thing is, is to be led wrong. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. To be led wrong by your leader and be punished for it because god is going to punish all of them he's not going to pick and choose you know the whole northern kingdom is going to be destroyed everybody okay but the other thing is god always sends somebody with the word it's just that they won't listen to him mm -hmm. for whatever reason you know sometimes the person is not attractive so they don't get our attention 
Sometimes the person is too short or the person's talk too long. You know? mm-hmm. You've been sitting in church for an hour and you still preaching. You know, I'm ready to go. I got to go do something else. So you don't want to listen. So you don't get it. Okay. But we all have our different reasons for what we do. But these priests were even taking bribes from people. Okay. Uh, they were being with prostitutes because that's a part of some of the idol worship. So all of this stuff was going on at the time. It was terrible. Really, really bad. Okay, let's see if we can get a couple more verses. Uh, Let me see. Who wants to read? Anybody? Don't all of y'all speak at one time. I'll read again if you want me to. <laughs> okay, come on with seven and eight. Okay. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. Mm-hmm. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on the iniquity. Okay, they eat up the sin of the people. They start to benefit from the people's sin. Okay, like I said, they would take bribes. Um, they were benefiting from everything that the people were doing wrong. These are the priests now who we're talking about in the northern kingdom of Israel. Okay, Erica, give me two more. Nine and ten. Okay. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. For they all shall eat and not half enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. All right. So we see here that God has gotten to a point with this group of folks. Now remember now, this is 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel, 10 of them. That's way over half. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only two tribes. Now remember now, some of the Levites, you know, we'll say, won't say 10, let's say nine and a half. Okay. Some of the Levites have gone to be with the southern kingdom of Judah because they didn't like what was going on. Okay. But 10, nine and a half of the 12 tribes of Israel have gone way off the rails and Hosea is the last prophet that's coming to him to them all right any questions tonight time has gone pretty fast I guess it goes fast when you're having fun all right Mm -hmm. any questions sister bishop come on I know you got one question for me come on (laughs) No, actually, you answered them. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. I hope you understand because you, to with me, I'm sorry, it's just me. Uh, I have to understand why people say what they say. Right. Why was Hosea preaching like this? And why mm-hmm. was it only Hosea? How come nobody helping him? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, da 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 da. I have, you know, it, I have to be able to relate. It has to be kind of humanized for me. But um, this this is what Hosea was up against. Hosea prophesied through, I want to say, four different kings. And all of them were evil. I think it was four. If you look on the back of your sheet. Five. Five. Three, four, five, six. Or six. Okay, six. Mm-hmm. Six different mm-hmm. kings. And everybody was bad. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So I see uh, Minister Faye came on. So Minister Faye, <laughs> oh, we pray to God that you don't be like Hosea and he had to send you to the Northern Kingdom. I, <laughs> amen. Because, you know, it's, it's bad that, you know, I, I think it's a scripture that say that, and I apologize, just beep, I'm at the hospital, but uh, when, when people, you know, uh, preachers are going to preach other people into heaven and be a castaway themselves. That's just sad. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. Say, so everybody's not going to get the big church with all the good folks and uh, <laughs> all the money and all the good things going on and all the good ministries. Some folks going to be sent in the priest to idol worshipers who don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Brother so, Benny. Yes. With, um, you said that um, he prophesied under uh, six different kings. Um, uh, approximately, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible that whoever saw that can uh, point that out on the paper? I have that. I have that paper. Right? I just want to make sure I'm looking the right. Yeah. Right. Look up. Look on the front. I'm well the front. Look on the side that has all the kings and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Look on the right side of the page because there's a column under the right. word Israel. Go all the way down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you see Amos, you see Elijah, Elisha, you see Amos, Hosea, right. Amos, Hosea, mm -hmm. Amos, Hosea, Amos, Hosea, Jonah. Jonah, Jonah was in a foreign country when he, <laughs> you know, Jonah, you know Jonah. Jonah, Jonah was Jonah was trying to get away. God, Jonah was trying to run from God. So he ran away to a different, whole different foreign country. But um, Hosea, Hosea, down at the bottom where you see mm -hmm. uh, Pika and Hoshea, uh, I think Amos was already off the scene by then. I don't know if he had passed away. Uh, probably or just gotten too old, but Hosea was kind of in his prime and kind of, you know, wearing down. Cause, cause when I look at the um under where it says prophet and has Amos slash Hosea, mm -hmm. and then when I go and look on look under the, um, the king column, uh, mm -hmm. some some of those are the same kings, so um might have been like less than six. So I just wanted to make sure I was um reading that right. It may may have been less than six. Okay. I don't have uh I didn't okay. write down the the exact that it was this was an approximation. Okay. All right. And remember remember now, um uh there was there are no there are not very many books in the Bible that are from the prophets that prophesied to the northern kingdom. Elijah did not write a book. Elisha did not write a book. Mm -hmm. But Amos did and Hosea did. So some of that, you know, you got to guesstimate time by what they said. Right. In the books. Because some of them talked about a king, some did not. You just had to go by the language. Yeah. So all that is approximate. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Any other kings? I'm now. Erica was supposed to ask me something, but I know she don't want to ask me that. And Tracy Boney, you, you got the exam okay. ready for us, Tracy? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. As long as you understand, you you know you have to wrap your mind around uh, what was going on at the time. Yes, and why people say it, what they say it. So sometimes when you hear a pastor preaching, uh, you know what the prophet was doing and why. So if pastor turns, say, turn to the book of Hosea, the third chapter and the such and such verse, you know that Hosea was the last chance for Israel, northern kingdom. Okay. Benny, I have a question, and this doesn't sure. have too much to do with today's lesson. But if okay. I were a new Christian and I wanted to study the Bible, would mm -hmm. I start in the New Testament or the Old? How would I get a good grasp, a good handle on how on studying the Bible? Where would okay. I start? I would suggest that you do like my wife did. Mm -hmm. uh, she, <laughs> oh, wait she a minute, so. <laughs> She read the Bible. There's an app that you can get where the Bible with a it's in chronological order, not just in the order the way it's written in the Bible. Because if you read it the way it's written in the Bible, once you get up to about Kings and the Chronicles, it gets out of order. You know, 
Exodus, you know, Genesis, Exodus, those books are in order, but after you get past them, it gets out of order and you can be reading something over here and it doesn't make sense to what you're reading over there. For example, when I read the Hosea before and it talked about God having something against Israel, I thought that was everybody. He had something against all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't realize that in between there, we've got a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, and you got a whole bunch of old, another whole story that's going on in the southern kingdom. And then you got this other story that's going on in the northern kingdom. And, you know, to really understand it as a, a new Christian, even as a seasoned Christian, you know, mm -hmm. if you've never studied it the way you should study it, then, you know, you'll get it kind of confused in there. Okay. okay. But that's what I would suggest. Get the it out. The chronological order. The chronological and it has order. the Bible because you it'll give it to you in chronological order. Then now, that would be the Old Testament, right? So you'll start I, would start, old... I would start with the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's helping me to read it in the order that it happened. I mean, the chronological order is the order that what happened first, what happened second, what happened third, what happened fourth. It's helping me to read it that way. And I'm just doing it on a uh, on an app, and it gives you a certain amount to read each day. It's okay. the Bible in a year. And it's I, I just found a chronological Bible. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. So it's helping me to put things into perspective because before that, I didn't know when any of that happened. And so now I know what happened first, what happened second, what happened third, what happened this year, what happened next year, what happened the next year after that, the next year after that, the next year after that. And I tell you, them folks with knuckleheads, they just did, <laughs> they just did not do right every time, every time. So uh, it explains why God just stopped talking to them for 400 years when okay. I when I did it like that. Okay. And, and I'm still reading it, sister. I'm I'm not done. I'm just I'm in it. I just try to read whatever the, it tells me to read each day. Now you said that's an app. On yeah, I I I, I on you version. Okay, you version has you all version. kinds of Bible study. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. So you just you know all kinds of Bible plans. I just decide to go in there and type in and search uh, for chronological. Okay. And I just picked one. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I always remember uh, when you get to the New Testament, Luke's account is in more in chronological order than any of the others. Oh, okay. Uh, the others are they are they are trying to get a message across. It's like it's like they are each of the other gospels are, is like they're doing a sermon, and so they pick you know they pick from here to to put there. That doesn't mean it necessarily happened in that order. They're trying to get a message. It's like a preacher preaching on Sunday morning. Okay. It's not in chronological order. But Luke's gospel, and then from Luke to the book of Acts, because Luke wrote, that was one book. So New Testament, I would kind of go that way. Okay. Thank you. All right. all right. Any questions from anybody else? Thank you all so much for putting up with me again tonight. Um, uh, we're going to continue in uh, chapter four next week, and Erica is going to come on and give us a review of everything. Um. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right. Um, are there any announcements? So, Smith, you all have anything from the kids over? Well, this is Sister Archibald. Okay, so tonight. Time. Okay, tonight we talked about miracles, and we talked about some of the mir you know, some of the special, amazing miracles that was performed, and we did the first one that Jesus did when he turned um, water to wine, and we talked about him coming the storm and. And we um, did a few healing miracles, a few of his healing miracles, and how he fed the 5,000. 
So they have homework for next week. They're going to have to look up some miracles and share them with us next week. Mm -hmm. all, all right, I can tell those teachers they like to give our homework. So Erica, don't, <laughs> don't be blaming me. We, we all do that. We, we all do that. Teachers do that. It's a teacher. Uh -huh. All right, very good. Uh, okay, so Smith, can you unmute yourself? Yes, and okay. I'd like to say I am a student in that class with Sister Karen. Nina does an awesome job of teaching. I mean, from the parables now to going to the miracle stories, I'm I'm literally taking notes as Sister Karen Nina is teaching the lesson and asking as many questions as the kids might ask. But I really love uh, sitting underneath her, listening to her uh, teach. So I do want to say that. But I do have an announcement. Um, uh, the uh, students who are going on the trip June 1st, uh, don't forget that you have to have uh, a uh, waiver, a permission slip. So if you did not get that, then you you need to pick that up on Sunday. Uh, also, the backpack connections forms. If your family needs help with school supplies, uh, make sure you pick up a form from me. And we have to turn them in by Sunday, June 2nd. If you bring the form back after that, I won't be able to help you. I have to turn them in that Monday. So the deadline for you to get the uh, forms back to me, if you need to get a backpack and school supplies will be Sunday, June 2nd. So you still have time to pick up a form. Please do that on Sunday and then get your parents to complete it and bring, and get it back to me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And, Thank you. Uh, go and good evening, um, everyone. And also um, Ms. French, she picked up the per Burgundy and Gold uh, St. Peter t-shirt. So those that did make a purchase, uh, she'll have those ready this coming Sunday to distribute as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, want to remind all of our men, um, we have already registered for the men of Zion retreat down in Greenville, Alabama. So, um, we'll be leaving going to Greenville on June the 1st. Um, the Men of Zion Retreat will be June the 1st in Greenville, Alabama. We'll be leaving in the church van. So anybody who wants to go, any of the men who want to go, uh, just let me know you, you want to go and all you have to do is come get on the van. We'll drive down. Uh, but we'll be leaving at 6 o'clock a.m. going to Greenville on Saturday, June the 1st. Okay, and Earl is not on here tonight, but I'm gonna, we're going to make Earl buy our lunch on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, we do get lunch down there. Uh, I think they still have the wild game cook-off and all that kind of stuff. But um, just want to remind you. All right. Uh, any other announcements? Uh, Sister Freeman, do we have any other announcements? You have uh, the district conference June the 7th, starting at 9 a.m. at Tabernacle. Okay. And that Saturday, June the 8th, is our third mass meeting for missionary. Okay. Wow, I can't can't believe uh, they've gotten district conference down to one day, man. I remember we used to go a week. Mm -hmm. District conference. Mm -hmm. Woo. But uh, yeah, it's gotten down to a week. So June the seventh, and then June the eighth, uh, missionary mass meeting. All right. Any any more announcements? So uh, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, I do want to announce for Sister Julia Prince that. Uh, she's trying to get the names of any uh, St. Peter members, males who are uh, 80 years old or older. So if you'll uh, get those names to Sister Julia Prince so she can recognize them for Father's Day. And also, uh, you said the men of Zion are leaving on that Saturday, June 1st. We are also going to the Georgia Aquarium. So 
we're going to have vehicles pulling out from St. Peter going down to Lomax and then vehicles pulling out from St. Peter going to Georgia as well. That's the same day uh, yeah. around the same time. So those of you who are going to the aquarium, we'll be headed out in an opposite direction, leaving the church. Uh, we're supposed to be there by 615 and leaving at 630. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, you all can all see uh, St. Peter is always busy during the summer. Our is like our schedule doubles during the summer it happens every year and it continues. Thank you all so much again for putting up with me tonight. I'm going to ask uh, Minister Faye, or can you pray us out this evening? Are you in a position where you can? I, I can. I'm just, I'm sitting by the bedside of Zan. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, tell him we, you know, we're praying for him as well. Amen. Okay. Right. Are we ready to go ahead and pray? Yes, we're going to go ahead and pray. Okay, may we pray. Oh, gracious God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we come, Lord. We come to you because you said we could come to you, Lord God. So we come, first of all, thanking you for an opportunity to learn more about your word, Lord God, learning more about you, Lord God, in hopes of that we don't continue repeating the same the same sin, the same stuff over and over again, Lord God. Let us be able to learn and heed to your commands, heed to your requests, Lord God, so that we will make it in, Lord God. So we, we don't want to be doing all this in vain, Lord God. And if there's anything within us that is not like you, Lord God, that will hinder um, our praise, our worship, Lord God, our our, our ministry, we ask you to remove it right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to continue blessing our teachers, Lord God. Bless the, the, the ones that log on, Lord God. Give them extra rest, extra peace tonight, Lord God. Whatever the needs are of the people, Lord God, whether they're uh, spoken or unspoken, Lord God, we ask you to grant it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Those of us that are standing in the gaps for others, Lord God, we ask you to Hear our cries, Lord God. Hear our pleas. Hear our requests, Lord God. And Lord, we, we're counting it done. We're counting it granted in the name of Jesus, Lord God. You said we have not because we ask not. We come asking you for peace. We ask you for healing. We ask you for finances. We ask you, Lord God, bless our children, Lord God, to be obedient. Lord God, bless us as parents and grandparents how to do the right things and say the right things that are pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, let us live according to what you would have us to do, Lord God. We thank you for the power and the authority that it's granted to us, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, so that we we don't have to just do lip service, Lord God. We can speak boldly. Lord God, your word and stand on it, Lord God, because we know that you are going to do what you said you're going to do, Lord God. Lord, we ask you to, to, to continue, Lord God, giving us your peace, Lord God, giving us, let us praise you, Lord God, no matter what we see with our natural eyes, Lord God, give us a spirit of praise, Lord God. Increase our prayer life, Lord God, so that we can communicate with you, Lord God, more often than you can communicate with us, Lord God. Lord, we we, we love you so much, Lord. Those things that I didn't think to pray, Lord, bless our pastor, Lord God, first lady, Lord God, all the the ministries going uh, in your name at St. Peter, Lord. We ask you to, to give us favor, Lord God. Give us favor in the land, Lord. You own everything, Lord. So we ask you to, to, to release our blessings right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those things that I didn't think to pray, Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that is right there, Lord God, praying uh, on our behalf. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We give you all glory, honor, and praise that you and you alone are due. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.